What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ring Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Thursday, January 12, 2023, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Entertainment Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The first trailer for the movie based on Judy Bloom's classic book, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, was released on Thursday. The 1970 book by Judy Bloom is considered one of the most influential female coming-of-age novels of all time and is one of the precursors of the popular young adult book genre. The film stars Rachel McAdams, Ant-Man's Abby Ryder Foster, Benny Safdie, and Kathy Bates. Bloom said she held on to the film rights for over 50 years because she was afraid an adaptation wouldn't properly reflect the story. But in 2018, producer James L. Brooks and the Edge of 17 writer director Kelly Freeman Craig had pitched the idea correctly. Craig told Entertainment Weekly, When I sat down with her, she had just seen my first film, The Edge of Seventeen, and she expressed that 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 made her feel confident that I was going to embrace all the flaws and nuances. That gave her confidence that the film would have the same honesty that she is so known for. In the trailer, Farster, who plays sixth grader Margaret, is shown sitting in a health class listening to a teacher explain menstruation. Then she's with her family, including her grandmother, Sylvia, played by Bates, and Mother Barbara, played by McAdams, as she tries to figure out the bewildering changes that puberty and adulthood will bring. The film is set in the 70s, the same period as the book. Craig says, while certain details have changed over the years, the experience of growing up is really universal. It's the same across the decades. There's something about an 11-year-old or 12-year-old girl today watching a girl in 1970 go through the exact same experience that she's going through today. The film focuses on Margaret at age 11, moving to a new town and begin to contemplate everything about life, friendship, and adolescence. The movie opens in theaters April 28th. Netflix is teasing the new film Luther, The Fallen Son. The streaming service shared a teaser for the crime drama Thursday that featured Idris Elba. Luther, The Fallen Son is a sequel to the TV series Luther, which had a five-season run on BBC One. Season five was released in January 2019. The sequel film is written by Luther creator Neil Cross and directed by season five director Jamie Payne. Elba will reprise his role of John Luther, a brilliant detective chief inspector with the dark side. The teaser shows Luther in the shadows as a person in a voiceover teases a new threat. The voice says, something's coming, you see me now? Cynthia Ervo, Andy Serkis, and Dermot Crowley also star. Netflix previously shared first look photos for the film in December. Luther, The Fallen Sun opens in selected theaters February 24th and starts streaming March 10th on Netflix. Apple TV Plus is giving a glimpse of the new film Sharper. The streaming service shared a trailer for the neo-noir thriller Thursday that featured Julianne Moore and Sebastian Stan. Sharper is written by Brian Gatwood and Alessandro Tanaka and directed by Benjamin Caron. The film is set in New York and sees the characters compete for riches and powers in a high-stakes game of ambition, greed, lust, and jealousy. Moore plays Madeline, who's romantically involved with billionaire Richard Hobbs, played by John Lithgow. Stan portrays Madeline's son, Max, who devises a plan with the woman, Sandra, played by Brianna Middleton, to get close to Richard's son, Tom, played by Justice Smith. An official description reads, motivations are suspect and expectations are turned upside down when nothing is as it seems. Sharper hails from Apple Original Films and A24. The film opens in selected theaters February 10th and starts streaming February 17th on Apple TV+. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film Your Place or Mine. The streaming service shared a trailer for the romantic comedy Thursday featuring Reese Witherspoon and Aston Kutcher. Your Place or Mine follows Debbie, played by Witherspoon, and Peter, played by Kutcher, two best friends who realize they might have feelings for each other after they swap houses for a week. The official description reads, Debbie and Peter are best friends and total opposites. She craves routine with her son in L.A. He thrives on change in New York City. When they swap houses and live for a week, they discover what they 
think they want might not be what they really need. Jesse Williams, Tignataro, Zoe Chow, and Steve Zahn also star. Netflix previously released first look photos for the film. Your Place or Mine is written and directed by Aileen Brosh McKenna. The film premieres February 10th on Netflix ahead of Valentine's Day. Paramount Plus is teasing the new series Wolfpack. The streaming service shared a trailer for the supernatural teen drama Thursday featuring Sarah Michelle Geller and Rodrigo Santoro. Wolfpack hails from Teen Wolf creator Jeff Davis. The series is based on the Edo Van Beck Holmes novel and follows a teenage boy and girl whose lives are changed forever when a California wildfire awakens a terrifying supernatural creature and drives it to attack a highway traffic jam beneath the burning hills. The official description reads, Wounded in the chaos, the boy and girls are inexplicably drawn to each other and two other teenagers who were adopted 16 years earlier by a park ranger after another mysterious wildfire. As their full moon rises, all four teens come together to unravel the secret that connects them, the bite and blood of a werewolf. Armani Jackson, Bella Shepard, Chloe Rose Robertson, and Tyler Lawrence Gray also star. Paramount Plus previously released a teaser that showed Geller and Centauro's characters discuss a dangerous creature. Wolfpack Premieres January 26. Paramount Plus will also release Team Wolf the movie, a sequel to the MTV series Team Wolf, the same day. The streaming service shared a trailer for the film in December. Mo Amir's series Mo will return for a second and final season on Netflix. Deadline reported Thursday that the comedy drama series will be renewed for season two. Mo is created by Mo Amir and Rami Youssef. Amir plays Mo Majar, a Palestinian refugee living in and seeking asylum in the United States. The series is inspired by Amir's life. Variety confirmed the news. Uh, Amir said in a statement, I'm thankful to continue to tell a universal story of struggle that relates to so many refugees and millions of underrepresented humans trying to be seen around the globe and to be able to bring the people who love and rooted for Mo Najer along for the ride as we close this chapter of his story. Teresa Ruiz, Farah Brasilio, and Omar Elba also star. Mo premiered on Netflix in August. Amir is nominated for Best Lead Performance in a new scripted series at the Independent Spirit Awards for his role in the show. Formula One Drive to Survive will return for a fifth season in February. Netflix shared a teaser and premiere date February 24th for the new season Thursday. The preview teases a step into the unknown as Formula One racing undergoes a big overhaul. Uh, One person says in the trailer, 2022 represents a new dawn for Formula One, the biggest overhaul that the regulations have ever had. Formula One Drive to Survive is a docuseries that gives a behind-the-scenes look at the Formula One World Championship. The series features never-before-seen footage and interviews from the 2022 Formula One season. The show is executive produced by James Gay Reese and Paul Martin. Netflix is teasing the new series Lockwood and Company. The streaming service shared a trailer for the series Thursday featuring Ruby Stokes, Cameron Chapman, and Ali Haji Hemashti. Lockwood and Company is based on the Jonathan Strahd book series of the same name. The series follows Lucy Carlisle, played by Stokes, Anthony Lockwood, played by Chapman, and George Karim, played by Haji Hejmati, a group of teens who run a ghost hunting agency. The official description reads... In, Lo- in London, where the most gifted teenage ghost hunters venture nightly into perilous combat with deadly spirits amid the many corporate adult-run agencies, one stands alone, independent of any commercial imperative or adult supervision. A tiny startup run by two teenage boys and a newly arrived supremely psych- uh, psychically gifted girl, a renegade trio destined to unravel a mystery that will change the course of history, Lockwood and Company. Um, Yvonne Jeremiah, Luke Treadway, Marvin Christie, Jemima Moore, Jack Ballandiria, and Ben Crampton also star. Lockwood and Company premieres January 27 on Netflix. So this is known for playing Francesca Bridgerton in the first two seasons of Bridgerton. She will be replaced by Hannah Dodd in season three. 
Grow-ish has been renewed by Freeform for a sixth season. The spin-off of Black is starring Yahari Shahadi, uh, Yara Shahadi and Marcus Scribner returns Monday for a second half of its fifth season. The actors play the Johnson siblings, the same roles they played in Blackish, created by Kenna, Kenya Barnes, uh, Kenya Barris. Grow-ish is a spin-off of the show starring Anthony Anderson and Tracy Ellis Ross that ran for eight seasons on ABC. Grow-ish focus on Shahadi's college journey at the fictional Cal U, Originally starring Trevor Jackson, Chloe, and Haley and Haley Berry, and Luke Sabat. Scribner, who plays Dre Johnson, joins the show in season five. Although Shahidi's character Zoe was the focus of the show at first, Scriber's character has moved to the forefront. Grow ish changed out some of its cast for season five as characters graduated college. With its renewal, Grow ish becomes the longest running series currently showing on Freeform. And it's getting closer to 100 episodes, a rare milestone for the channel. ABC has renewed Abbott Elementary for a third season Wednesday. Season 2 aired Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Abbott Elementary won Golden Globes Tuesday for actors Quinta Bronson and Jesse Tyler Williams and Best Series Musical or Comedy. Actors Shirley Ralph and Janelle Jones were also nominated. Uh, Brunson created the show and plays second grade teacher uh, Janie Teagues. Janie is idealistic and ambitious to help her students at the underfunded Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Public School. James plays Principal Ava Coleman. Williams plays Gregory Eddy, a substitute who decides to join Abbott full time. Ralph plays veteran teacher Barbara Howard, who cautions Janelle to keep her expectations reasonable. Lisa Ann Walter and Chris uh, Perfetti also plays teachers. Wayne Sanford Davis placed custodian Mr. Johnson. Abbott Elementary also won Emmys for Ralph's performance. Brunson's writing and casting director Wendy O'Brien. It was Emmy nominated for Williams, uh, James and Brunson's performance and for Outstanding Comedy Series. ABC is developing a spin-off for Jeopardy. The network has ordered Jeopardy Masters, a new quiz show hosted by Ken Jennings, a former Jeopardy champion with, who co-hosts Jeopardy with My Belak. Jeopardy Masters will see six of the highest ranked Jeopardy contestants face off in a Champions League style event to become the Jeopardy Masters champion. Mac Amodio, Sam Beertre, Andrew He, James uh, Holtzhauer, Matea Roach, and Amy Schneider will compete in the first season. Uh, Sony Pictures Television will produce a new series with Jeopardy! showrunner Michael Davies as executive producer. ABC previously launched the spin-off Celebrity Jeopardy! hosted by Belak. In addition, ABC renewed the game show's Celebrity Family Feud and Press Your Luck along with the reality competition series Claim to Fame. Pianist Chloe Flower faced backlash when the Golden Globes viewing audience thought she was responsible for the music that urged winners to wrap up their speeches. The 37-year-old musician soon found herself going viral for all the wrong reasons. Actress Michelle Yeoh told the piano player, whose music interrupted her speak, to shut up, saying jokingly she could beat you up. However, Flower was not the person playing the wrap-up music. She explained she was playing at the awards for another purpose. She told people the next day, I was hired to play the piano when we come back from commercial break and re-entered the program. It's called a rejoin. Uh, that was the only time I was ever supposed to play, and that was the only time I played. I think that all of the winners and celebrities who were uh, being cut off didn't all of a sudden I became the face of the playoff music. Flowers credited Golden Globe host Gerald Carmichael for trying to set the record straight, saying she cried because he was so supportive as hostile tweets were directed her during the show. Flower says he came backstage and told me he was going to take care of it. He's like, I'm going to say something. I'm going to set it straight because this isn't fair. He's like, we're so lucky to have you and thank you for being here. Uh, that's what made me cry, actually. I wasn't what was coming at me on social media or whatever the actors felt or didn't feel. It was the fact that everybody there had my back and they were there to protect me. On her Instagram account, Flower thanked a, a, posted a thank you to Carmichael while also calling attention to the horrors of sex trafficking. The classical pianist and composer is also an influencer who has a massive social media following for her passionate piano playing 
in a designer's outfit from the 63rd floor of her New York City apartment. She plays on Liberace's mirrored piano, which was loaned to her from his estate. Flower also made sure to approach Yo and made sure she knew that she wasn't responsible for the wrap-up music that has in her, her speech. Um, she told The Hollywood Reporter, I, it's really important for Asian William, women, especially Asian women today, especially in Hollywood, to unite. I'm up and coming. She's hugely established. I'm a huge fan of Michelle Yeoh. I didn't know Michelle was coming, and when I saw that she was there, um, I was at the piano in real time. I was like, oh my God, she's here. When that happened, I was so rattled because I was like, oh my God, I loved her. I don't want her to think that I'm performing during her speech. I would never do that. Yo was the winner of the Best Actress Award for Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture, Comedy, or, or Musical for Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, released on Tuesday amid a flurry of media appearances have already sold 1.4 million copies. Per Penguin Random House, the publishers of the record-setting memoirs by Barack and Michelle Obama, the book sales from the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom include hardcover, audiobooks, and e-book versions. Spare sold 400,000 copies in the United Kingdom alone, making it the fastest-selling non-fiction book in the country's history. Um, Larry Finlay, the managing director of the Trans World Penguin Random House, told The Guardian, We always knew this book would fly, but it is exceeding our most um, bullish expectations. As far as we know, the only books to have sold more in their first day are those starring the other Harry Potter. In the memoir, Harry, whose 38 detailed his tumultuous relationship with the British royal family, including his father, King Charles, and his brother, Prince William. He also talks about grieving over his mother, Princess Diana, who was killed in a car crash in Paris in 1997. In the book, as excerpt by People, he wrote about his feelings after asking to drive through the Pont de la Tunnel where his mother died in, at 60 mi- 65 miles per hour, same speed the car she was a passenger in was going when it crashed. He said, it had been a very bad idea. I had plenty of bad ideas in my 23 years, but this one was uniquely ill-conceived. I told myself that I wanted closure, but I didn't really. Deep down, I'd hoped to feel in that tunnel what I felt when JLP gave me the police files. This belief, doubt, instead, that was the night all doubt fell away. She's dead, I thought. My God, she's really gone for good. Harry says that it was the first time he realized his mother was truly gone and that instead of diminishing his pain over the loss, it made it much worse. Harry has been on a major press tour sharing details about the book and the royal family with interviews ranging from Good Morning America's Michael Strahan to Stephen Colbert. Reviews of the book have ranged from sympathetic to skating, but they are not slowing sales. Disney named the new board chairman on Wednesday while continuing to fend off billionaire investor Nelson Peltz's bid to join. Nike executive Mark Parker was elected chairman following an annual meeting of shareholders. As he said in a press release, Parker has been a board member for seven years and is the executive chairman of Nike. Parker succeeds Susan E. Arnold, whose 15-year term limit as chairwoman precluded her from seeking re-election. The board was was to be reduced to 11 members, saying... Arnold. Robert A. Iger, the chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, said, Mark Parker's vision and incredible depth of of experience and wise counsel has been invaluable to Disney. And I look forward to continuing working with him in his new role, along with our other directors, as we chart the future course of this amazing company. On behalf of my fellow board members and the entire Disney management team, I also want to thank Susan for her superb leadership as chairman for her timeless work over the past 15 years as an exemplary steward of the Disney brand. The board nominated several of its members for re-election while recommending shareholders uh, not support the nomination Pelts. Tryon Group nominated Pelts, who founded the Tryon Fund Management LP in 2005. The group was proposing amendments to its board bylaws. Pelt is considered an activist investor who seeks to gain significant influence over how the Walt Disney Company operates. According to CNBC, Pelt believes the company has lost its way. Its financial performance has weakened since the last year. 
Shakira is back with new music. The 45-year-old singer released the song BZRP Middle Session Number 53 with Argentinian producer Biz Rap on Friday. In BZRP's Music Session 53, Shakira slams her ex and his new girlfriend. Um, the release of the song follows Shakira's split from her longtime partner, Gerard Pio. Shakira and Pio were together for 12 years and have two children, Milan and Sasha. Pio has been with link to Clara Chicha Marti, uh, who's 22. Shakira said in the October issue of Elle that she was experiencing her darkest hour in the wake of the split. The singer said, I've remained quiet and just tried to process it at all. And so it's been tough not only for me, but also for my kids. Incredibly difficult. I have paparazzi camping outside in front of my house 24-7, and there's not a place where I can hide from them with my kids except for my own house. Demi Lovato's album poster for her new release has been banned in Britain as it was deemed potentially offensive to Christians. The British Advertising Standard Authority says that Lovato's provocative imagery and album title could be misconstrued as blasphemous. The initial ad was placed in six areas around London in August 2022. Lovato's album released in August entitled Holy Fuck, and therein lies the issue. The ASA says most will confuse the album with its more profane version. The album's subject matter deals with candidly with Lavelle's admitted mental health and addiction struggles. In shades of a similar controversy over music and imagery from Madonna's Like a Virgin project in the 80s, the ASA questioned whether the poster was appropriate for all ages and whether or not it mocked Christian beliefs. Um, the... Uh, they said, we consider that the image of Miss Lovato bound up in a bondage style outfit while lying on a mattress shaped like a crucifix in position with her legs bound on one side, which was remnants of Christ on the cross together with the reference of holy fuck, which is in that contents was likely to be viewed as linking sexuality to the sacred symbol of the crucifixion and the crucifix uh, was likely to cause serious offenses to Christians. Polidor, the British import of Lovato's American record label Universal Records, said that the uh, they asked the UK agency working with them to make sure the imagery would stand and got their approval beforehand. The posters did register for complaints and were removed after four days. The ASA asked Polidor Universal to ensure that future ad campaigns were evaluated thoroughly to ensure that they were not going to be viewed as offensive. Holy Fog is Lovato's eighth album. The former Disney star who used the pronouns she and they after coming out as pansexual and non-binary said last year that she embraced the dark themes on the album. She told the Los Angeles Times, You can't have light without dark. That economy was really important to me, and I had to take my anger out of the shadows in order to heal. I'm owning my dark side, but it doesn't have to take me down. And finally, two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Jeff Beck died at the age of 78 on Wednesday after a short bout with bacterial meningitis. Beck's death was confirmed by a spokesperson through his official Instagram page. The Instagram post said, On behalf of his family, it is with deep and profound sadness that we share the news of Jeff Beck's passing. After suddenly contracting bacterial meningitis, he peacefully passed away yesterday. His family asked for privacy while they, they processed this tremendous loss. Beck was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist in 2009, and before that, a member of the English rock band The Yardbirds in 1992. Former bandmate Jimmy Page inducted him into the Hall of Fame in 2009. A virtuoso on the sixth string, Beck was known as a one-man, one-instrument orchestra because of his dazzling speed and musical vocabulary. He picked up the guitar at 15 and never put it down. Throughout his 50-year career in the music business, he earned eight Grammy Awards, including the award's uh, Best Rock Instrumental Performance for his song Escape that appeared in his 1985 album Flash. He was known as a rock and metal pioneer, but Beck's music did not comfort to any genre. Escape is an electronic per percussive fusion of rock and jazz music. The Yardbirds, on the other hand, developed from rock and blues into a formative psychedelic rock band. Beck has collaborated with a wide range of artists, from Kate Bush to John Bon Jovi. 
He also worked with Pink Floyd's uh, singer Roger Waters, who once considered recruiting him for the band. He released 17 studio albums and 11 live albums, many from his solo project, The Jeff Beck Group, along with many more compilations and albums which he contributed. Most recently, Beck released the album 18 in 2020. The, mater- the album was a combination of original material and cover songs. Beck was 78. And that is your entertainment report for Thursday, January 12, 2023. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.